All three and a half hours of the Cinema Snobs 1962 in film is finally available over at Channel Awesome, and that's the year we saw all kinds of classics that changed the face of certain genres and inspired generations of filmmakers, from the Academy Award-winning Lawrence of Arabia to the docu-realness of The Longest Day, the surreal terror of Carnival of Souls, plus James Bond came in and told us how spy films are done. And screen legends Betty Davis and Joan Crawford had their comeback with Whatever Happened to Baby Jane. So anyway, let's talk about the 1962 film Mr. Peter's Pets. You know, the one about the guy who takes some animal ambrosia to turn into pets and watch girls naked. Like that one movie about the guy who found x-ray glasses to see girls naked. All stemming from the popularity of Russ Meyer's 1960 release of The Immoral Mr. T's about a guy who gets some gas at the dentist and can see girls naked. Mr. Peter's Pets is the perfect film if you found it too awkward to jerk off during the Shaggy D.A. or Oh Heavenly Dog. Maybe it's autobiographical. It's directed by a Peter, as in Peter Perry Jr. Oh, I'm sorry. I mean Dick Crane. Great. Now they're letting the filming equipment direct. Perry had previous work in B-horror films like Honeymoon of Terror and westerns like Revenge of the Virgins and a little sexploitation in them all like his later films with the secret sex lives of Romeo and Juliet. I think they're too young for that movie! And hello, I've heard of Caligula's ploitation, but there's Cleopatra's ploitation? With these films, you can always count on an opening that asks, is this a PSA for a high school or a skin flick? I shouldn't have to ask that. There will always be a sweet, jazzy score, too, here by Nicholas Karras. Snob fans will know his musical work in The Astro Zombies and Dr. Sex. They'll know cinematographer Gene Gropper's work, too. Of course, he shot like wow. Oh, and Lassie's Rescue Rangers. Guess he is the perfect person to shoot the animal-themed nudie cutie. This movie's gonna have everything. Girls, a dancer, and a Maharaja are in it. I wasn't kidding when I said they just got equipment to make this. I love the quality editing work of movie tech. Everything in this is so literal. The hero's name is William Companion Peters, a lonely man who works at and lives in the pet shop with his friends. Good morning, little friend. Please, on an empty stomach! Hmm, I think that parrot needs new sound equipment. Mr. Peters is played by character actor Alfred Hopson, who can be seen in everything from The Andy Griffith Show to Little House on the Prairie and The Wedding Singer. No clue on if he turned into a kitten in those. Sadly, he does not immediately throw away his junk mail like the rest of us. Hmm, well, I guess I could order this animal ambrosia. They typed out some words onto a stock image of a book. That must mean it's serious. I got nothing left to lose. My gas station doesn't have Snapple, so I'll drink this tea. This is back in the day when you couldn't just simply click purchase. Dear Maharaja, it's 1962. Sure, I say I want to use it to make the animals happy, but we're all extremely sexually repressed here. It seems to work for the Maharaja, Dom Deloise. Look, he's happy and surrounded by naked women who look like they're made in a church secretary factory. This goes on for a while, where we have to see him lay there and eat grapes. This does not make me want to see the Cleopatra sex film. He's played by somebody named J.S. Lee. Jason Scott Lee, how could you? Now we have to watch one of them dance. Doesn't he get bored watching this every night? Don't know why I'm saying this, but are we gonna get to Mr. Peters turning into animals? This guy looks like he's about to chase Daffy Duck for stealing a giant diamond. And now he's complaining about his day and creates his ambrosia by sleeping on a pounded down nail. Makes sense. Chemistry is weird. 
Three years later, Mr. Peters finally receives his package. He'll be very disappointed when it's just an advertisement for Ovaltine. It looks appetizing, though. It's the ink that makes it powerful, and the unsettling camera angles. <laughs> Thanks, horny Swedish chef, and don't break any of Grandma's dishes in the background. Surprisingly, the animals aren't interested in this. I've tried Khrushchev came through Disneyland. He personally promised to put a ban on those idiotic pets. Not me, Dad. I turned on Cape Canaveral. <laughs> Look, it's still more mature than that last Dr. Doolittle movie. I haven't seen him pull junk out of a dragon's ass yet. But hey, if the animals don't want it, that of course means you just have to eat it yourself. You can't say it's not fast acting. And much like in Manimal, we need narration to fill us in on the very confusing plotline. Since you can hardly expect anyone who looks like this to be able to talk too, let me cover for her. That's right, she's clearly too dumb to talk. Let the narrator explain it. And by that we mean we don't have the budget to actually record live sound and show anyone talk. A nudie cutie staple. She really wants a pet, and he can already tell she's hot, I guess. Since he's already turned into a turtle, he suggests that, perverted old bastard. He's arriving just in time. It's during the 12 hours of the day she cleans all sexy-like. No need to call the police. There's always someone standing outside of windows back then, doing magic. <laughs> Why isn't it? Great, what sex offender has turned into a cat this time? Mother always told me it was dangerous to permit yourself to be handled by a young lady. Oh yeah, she's the dangerous one in this scenario. Now she's gonna take him in to be neutered. What? No! I've been scammed by the Maharaja again! I know I always wrap myself in a towel and blow kisses whenever we get a new pet. Let's take a break. It's gonna go south when he gets so excited that he destroys her couch with his claws. We've got another convention coming up. Come see us April 26th through the 28th at C2E2 in Chicago, where we'll have more prints, movies, exclusive episodes, and copies of my book, Class of 86. Get your tickets today at C2E2.com and hope to see you there. We're back, and he's getting nervous when they go to the bathroom. Oh my, oh my, maybe this is a good time for me to leave. That's right, cats hate baths. Are you sure? It's Mr. Bubble. No, damn it! I just want to lay here and sleep. And don't stink up the place by taking a shit when you're done. I don't know where this kinky-ass movie is going. I like when he says he's doing this for the good of animal kind. Oh yeah, giraffes have been waiting to stick their heads in through windows like this like it's a cartoon. Wait, wait, no! This is going south fast! I guess he just left. Isn't she gonna miss her new kitten? No time for that. He's gotta leave a positive 1962 Yelp review. Dear Maharaja, five stars out of five. Now send me some more magic Jägermeister. On a positive note, this guy was my age when he was in this. Now I know what the cinema snob would have looked like in 1962. Welcome to early 60s Cinema Snob, a toast with my spiced clinker brick wine. I've got no movies to review in my comfy chair, so I'm gonna turn into a rabbit and go watch some titties. He hears that jazzy score again, so someone sexy is in the shop. Oh, battlefield approach. Run, run, run as fast as you can! Between Mr. Peters and the narrator, there's no getting out alive. Come oh, now, Willie, you can certainly do better than that. First thing you better do is provide her with some creature comfort. Ugh, Mr. Narrator, stop enabling this man! Uh -huh, what could someone this hot be doing in a store? It can't be to buy something. She obviously wants me to look at her naked. Things are looking up, aren't they? Huh? Two customers in one day, I mean. 
<laughs> a shot of hot calves is the deep throat of 1962. It appears he spent his whole life savings on these potions. He can turn into any animal he wants before he sells his recipe off to Isma from Emperor's New Groove. Why isn't there a bigger deal made about the fact that he brought the dodo bird out of extinction? That's the look of a man who's going to get away with shit that he shouldn't be getting away with. The hell is he gonna do? Turn into a horse and tailgate her? If she gets freaked out, push her in the water. That would have been an easier plan than what he actually does. For you see, she's on a hot fishing trip, which seems to confuse Mr. Peters. Um, so she's gonna catch her own goldfish in the ocean to put into a bowl? Is, is she okay? Did she hit her head or something? He'll help her out by being a creep about it. I think she's safer with the sharks. Something about this plotline tells me exactly what a porn parody of the incredible Mr. Limpet would have looked like if he turned into a fish and allowed himself to be caught. Get that hook out of me mouth! It's it hurting me lip! Where did you think that was going? Quite an intricate plan to turn into a goldfish on the off chance she has a bowl ready and immediately strips down naked for you to watch. Bro, just buy a dirty magazine. Ugh, oh God, this isn't the kind of water I'm used to. Mistake, mistake, mistake. What is this universe where the women just strip down to pose sexy for pets that they buy? I guess that is the better alternative if every dude in the town is like this. Anyway, you look cold, Mr. Fish. Let me set you on these rocks so you can get a nice tan. I understand these sound effects less than I understand the plot. Did one of her boobs just explode? Oh, never mind. It's that when he's done being an animal, it turns into a stuffed animal. Oh, that makes sense. Pfft and his clothes are still very wet, and we don't have the Maharaja on the line to pad out the movie some more. So let's not only watch it dry, but also drip into the pot. This stupid magic ambrosia has no rules! But this is the part where it gets sad. He has a cold. <coughs> That's not the only thing he's going to catch in his lifetime. Next time he has sex, he'll get mad cow disease. Oh look, he's in the era of the cinema snob I went through a couple of weeks ago. He's sick from COVID and still has the courage to talk about Easter Bunny Massacre. See, there's the bunny right now. That's more rabbits than an Easter Bunny Massacre. Let's take a break so he can get properly shit-faced enough to finish the film. I'm Neil Padgett, president of Petland Discounts. For 20 years, we've offered every product to help keep your pet healthy and happy at discount prices. Petland discounts for people who love pets. Now 27 convenient locations. We're back, people. <laughs> the Neighborhood Watch doesn't exist yet. By Neighborhood Watch, it just means Mr. Peters can watch anyone in the neighborhood he wants. Did they run out of animal actors or something? He didn't turn into anything but a horny skunk. So what's he gonna change into as he watches her skinny dip? A crow? A smallmouth bass? A hippo? My guess is gonna be as good as yours. Excellent. A duck that does his own magic sound effects. It was nice of the magic potion to turn him into a duck that already came with a leash. That way he won't get away from the pet wrangler. And the way this duck is moving around, he wants no part of Mr. Peter's pets. I was in everything's ducky with the great Mickey Rooney and Buddy Hackett. This is a giant step down for me. I guess he's bored of that now, so he turns back into a toy like she won it at the world's worst carnival act that she didn't even know she was a part of. Now he finally goes back home and does what he should have done from the beginning. Stay in and just look at dirty magazines all night. Though I don't like how it inspires him to feed the rabbit. Maybe you're interested in a carrot. That's a look of a man who was born for Bugs Bunny to replace that carrot with dynamite. 
but he has to go back outside. He's got his work cut out for him. Not one, not two, but three girls off on their usual, um, day at the rocks to paint and play guitar. There's only ten minutes of the movie left. I hope it ends just like Death Proof. You turned into a bird and flew too close to the sun! Now you're gonna get your head caved in with stilettos. Guess we're done with our painting and guitaring. So, uh, I don't know, uh, let's, uh, go to the set of E-Gods, strip down. I actually do want to see how this movie would portray it if he turned into a dodo. On second thought, if he just sits there looking like that long enough, maybe they'll think he's the vulture from Looney Tunes. Wanna watch me play guitar? Oh, <laughs> no, 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 no. When he hides under the rocks and has this look, I bet he's watching something really provocative. That's right, naked women playing paddle ball. I'm sure that actually was a magazine back then. Time for his most ambitious transformation yet. Okay, seriously, he can bring back dinosaurs? Why are you using this for stupid reasons? This isn't Jurassic World Dominion! But we don't have the budget for dinosaurs. Let's pick something else. There, the director's dog. That's cheaper. Why does he even need to turn into an animal? He seemed fine creeping out by the rocks as himself. But it's doubtful they'd pick up a human like this. Sensitive clutch? I just wonder about her translation. She's doing things to my stomach. Don't worry, the dog bails on the movie, so Mr. Peters finally gets what's coming to him. It's my... Hey, hey, I'm a man again. Uh-oh, after being embarrassed like that, I bet he's never gonna do that again. He's learned his lesson, just run off like the Three Stooges while the girls have a nice laugh. <laughs> Typical Tuesday for us. Dude, what are you doing? You only got hit in the head with a painting. No need to go overboard by throwing it all away. You can bring back dinosaurs. You're gonna be rich. No, no, I'd rather sit here and be a YouTuber. Greetings, fellow snobsters. Today we're gonna talk about Carnosaur. I don't understand the rules here. Watch what happens when he picks up the rabbit. Yes. And that's not the weird part. Remember earlier when the vial fell in the rabbit's cage? Well, the rabbit's turned into a hot chick. So I guess he's gonna bang the broad and feed her carrots. Does she still have the mind of a rabbit? And what kind of message is this to leave the movie on? Be yourself? Don't tell this man to be himself. Yep, that's the end, people. Have you learned your lesson? Don't turn into animals to watch naked women. Do it as yourself. Then maybe your rabbit will turn into a model who's all yours. That movie was dumb. Lords of Arabia is way better. I was expecting something far more dignified from this poster as he leads women around on a leash who are walking their own pets. Where's the greatest peel since the banana? Whatever the hell that means. This seemed more like a carrot movie. The worst thing to happen to carrots since this guy's obsession in crime of the age. But you can see all this and more in 1962 in film. There's even nudie westerns, one with monsters, and two directed by Coppola. Click on the link to see the full episode, and we'll see you next time. Uh-oh. Well, she's having lighter trouble. Combustible things should come easily under normal circumstances. I'm sure Willie would come up with a bright idea.